Welcome to a new video. If you're new to the channel, you might consider pressing the subscribe button to stay up to date with my videos. This will be a review video and if you happen to do current measurements and would like to see those current waveforms on your oscilloscope, stick around because today we are looking at oscilloscope current probe. This is the Mixig CP2100 series current probe. It's my first piece of equipment from Mixig, but I've been hearing good things about them, so I kind of have high expectations for this product, which, by the way, was provided for free by Banggood.com for the purpose of this review. I highly recommend you check out their website, which will be linked below, because their price for this is already pretty good. But I've managed to obtain you an additional discount code which is placed in the description below which will give you an additional discount for this product and that makes it a pretty sweet deal then you'll see why in a few moments. First let's start with this uh, carry case this feels really nice the plastic is of decent quality and you immediately uh, get a feeling that you might be dealing with some good quality equipment in this box. When you open it Everything is nicely arranged in this foam with cutouts. Uh, this foam padding will uh, protect this during shipping and if you plan to use this in the field as well. Inside the box we get this uh, warranty card with the uh, serial number of the unit. Uh, we get a USB type B cable because as I will show next uh, this probe is powered from USB, it doesn't need any batteries which in my opinion is a great feature to have. We always have uh, USB ports on modern oscilloscopes and we can use those to power accessories like this without wasting batteries. This is the probe itself and I wish you could feel this. It, it just feels like any other high quality and expensive piece of equipment that you would probably get from Keysight or Agilent. Which, which are the same company and uh, only that this one is in, in a much lower price range so the plastic feels really nice on this handle and there is this uh, texture to improve grip on the handles then there's this really nice uh, strain relief for the wire and the opening action of the clip feels pretty good there is some nice positive feedback provided by this spring. The opening here is about 12 millimeters wide so you will be able to clip this onto wires that are no bigger than 12 millimeter in diameter but I think that covers 99% of the use cases for this. This uh, gray wire is definitely shielded wire because you can kind of see that through the uh, insulation and uh, it, it feels like a very good quality wire and it has this uh, strain relief uh, on both ends uh, and then there is the uh, BNC wire that connects to your oscilloscope once again that strain relief and this is where the um, power comes in through this uh, USB uh, connector and you also get an output uh, that you can use to power a secondary accessory. What I have here is the CP2100A variant which is rated for 800 kilohertz bandwidth. There is also a B variant which is rated for up to 2 megahertz in, the, in their latest uh, revision. That one is a bit more expensive and I would only recommend getting it if you really need that bandwidth otherwise there shouldn't be any other difference between the two models. I don't know if I mentioned that this already but obviously it can measure AC and DC. It has two ranges 10 amps and 100 amps and there is this uh, zero function uh, on the module for automatic zero adjustment and you can also do manual offset adjustments with these two arrow keys. Mixig specs this as a 3% plus or minus 50 milliamps accuracy for the uh, 10 amps range and 4% plus or minus 50 milliamps for the 100 amps range but from what I've been reading on the forums this is actually better than the spec you can pretty much measure down to 50 milliamps without having to worry about that plus or minus 50 milliamps uh, and we'll put that to a test later. So you might be asking yourself 
all of this sounds really nice, but why would you take a Mixig probe instead of one from known manufacturers like uh, Keysight, Rigel, Roden Schwartz? Well, the price to quality and performance ratio on this unit is much better for the Mixig product because you get the quality which is similar to what you've seen on the so-called uh, good and well-established manufacturers, but you also get higher specs with lower cost on this unit. And let me give you a few examples. The Rigel RP1001C, uh, that, that sells for 961 euros. The uh, Testec TTCC220 uh, for 539 euros. Uh, the Roden Schwartz RTZC02 for 875 euros. Uh, then there is the Siglent CP4070A for 704 euros. And then they all have lower bandwidth, they feel clunkier by design, some of them use batteries, some use external power supply adapters. Then comes the Mixig probe which has all of these advantages mentioned earlier and it sells for $225 and using that discount coupon code you can get it for even cheaper. And I think it's pretty clear uh, who the winner is here. It's about time we connect this to the oscilloscope for some testing. So the BNC goes to channel one, the USB goes to the USB port of the oscilloscope. Uh, we can see some green lights on the unit. The lighting I have on the bench uh, kind of makes it uh, hard to see, but there is an LED behind this uh, range button which lights up green. I am using the good old Rigel DS1054Z and this has the option of switching the measurement unit to amps for a particular channel but you need to remember that for the 10 amps range you get 100 millivolts per amp so that is a times 10 game while for the 100 amps range you get 10 millivolts per amp which is times 100 settings. The first thing you should do with a current probe is to zero it and you do that by leaving the clip disconnected and you press the zero button. It beeped, the light turned off which means the unit is now zeroed and we can use it to measure the current I'm putting through this wire which is 50 milliamps coming from my bench power supply. And we're seeing a value, an, av an average value of about 56, 57 uh, milliamps measured uh, by this probe. There's also a lot of noise involved but the point I'm trying to show here is that this is better than plus or minus 50 milliamps like their coating in the spec sheet. And to be honest, you're not going to use a current probe to do this kind of precision current measurement. This is more a tool that will help you visualize the current in a graph over time. Whenever you need the precision, you switch to a multimeter. Having such a tool can be very helpful to visualize a very high current next to a very low current in the same waveform. Like for example, I once worked on automotive engine controller circuitry and uh, that needs to control the uh, waveform on the injectors. This is an example of that waveform. Injectors are usually controlled with a peak and hold pattern, which means you have a high peak current that can be in the 20 amps range. This is a very short pulse, which is required to rapidly open the uh, injector valve in the shortest time possible. And then you have the hold current, which takes a bit longer and can be as much as four times smaller in amplitude than the peak. And this is what regulates the flow of fuel through the uh, injector and controls the, the quantity that goes through. Now to analyze and tune these waveforms, you need one of these current probes placed on the wire powering the uh, injector coil. Another useful application is with switch mode power supplies where you might want to look at various current waveforms in your circuit and using such a probe will allow you to do that while doing an isolated measurement so you don't have to worry about blowing stuff up. Now to measure and confirm the bandwidth of this probe, I would need a signal generator to put a sine wave through a resistor as a load and measure the current through that. 
as I increase the frequency of the signal. The moment when the measured signal drops in amplitude by 3 dB is our max bandwidth for the circuit. I don't have a signal generator to perform that test, but I can tell you that others have tested this unit and it checks out. Mixig is providing accurate specs for this unit. It meets the specified bandwidth and if at any time I'll get a uh, signal generator, I will put this through that test. To take it apart, I had to remove the front sticker because the four screws were hiding under the, the front sticker. I just used a hair driver to soften the glue on the, the, the sticker and then I carefully removed it without damage. And now that we're inside the unit, we can see the nice attention to detail and the quality of the the build quality of this unit like they have these securing points for the wires which will ensure these will not get pulled uh, from the unit and just look at how nice this strain relief fits into that slot which is molded into the case really nice attention to detail and if we take a look at the other side we should see the uh, contacts for the soft membrane switches That's right, there isn't much circuitry on the back. And if you're interested in some higher resolution images uh, for this uh, board, uh, please check out the blog post, which will be linked in the description below. Now, let's try to take this can off to see uh, what they're hiding in there. That's nice, it's the first time I'm seeing this type of construction for the um, shielding cans. So it's a two-part job and they kind of hold each other together. So there's only a few capacitors on this side. Yeah, so they, they use no soldering at all for the assembly of these uh, shielding cans, which is nice for me because I can easily take a look in here. So even the, the soldering on this looks very nice. No flux residue. Everything is uh, nice and shiny in here. Now the real question here would be if uh, this is the same hardware in the CP2100B variant which can go up to 2 MHz and if it's just a uh, software difference between the two or maybe there's a few components that you can uh, change in the input side to or in the amplifier side to make this a 2 megahertz a, a B variant because if we look here the uh, uh, sales screen says CP 2100A slash B so that kind of shows some hope that they're maybe using the same PCB for the A and B variant and they're just switching a few components around or maybe a, a firmware in a microcontroller. I've also took apart the uh, probe I was curious to how it's built and we find the same build quality in here everything looks super nice and uh, it was shielded from both sides but i removed the shields to show you what's hiding underneath this is the uh, the part where the uh, actual sensor sits in and i believe they're using a couple of tmr sensors in here while the cheap probes the 50 60 dollar probes use hole sensors tmr which stands for tunnel magneto resistance effect has some advantages over standard hull sensors like uh, less temperature drift and aging deterioration. I think there's also like a bandwidth advantage. And these TMR sensors have their roots in the hard drive industry because a lot of the technology used in the magnetic heads on hard drives is very similar. And now to give you my final thoughts on this piece of gear, I like it very much. I've always wanted to have a decent current probe and Right now on the market, there isn't any other that can beat the quality, the specs and the price of this Mixig probe. I like how the uh, probe clip part is separate from the electronics box. Uh, it makes it smaller and more convenient to use. Other manufacturers choose to build one big probe with everything contained in the handle, but I prefer this split design better. If you need a current probe and you want an affordable one, then this is definitely the one to get. If you don't know if you need a current probe or not, I might give you a piece of advice here. If you're thinking of getting it for measuring your small low power development boards under 50 milliamps, 
it's not the right tool for the job. For that application, you are better off at using a uh, Joule scope, which I reviewed in Volog 211. This will offer much better precision in those lower ranges and coupled with the software you get more advanced capabilities for analyzing the power usage of your low power circuits. But if you're working on the high, higher power electronics and you need to look at those uh, waveforms, then get one of these current probes. Mixig is a new company in this field. They started uh, recently in 2016, so just four years old, but the quality of the products uh, they sell seems very good, so I'm pretty sure they will catch up to competition pretty soon. Uh, I really like the format of uh, uh, the tablet oscilloscopes they make. That would make for an awesome portable oscilloscope, which would be nice to have in my toolkit for field work. So maybe I'll get a chance in the future to take a look at one of those. Don't forget to check out the uh, links I will place in the description below and use the discount code provided if you decide to order one. Let me know what you think about this in the description below. Maybe you already have one of these. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.